Hey, Petul. Uh, I know that you're a visual artist, photographer, filmmaker, uh, and the founder of Glow Creative Studio. Uh, how would you define yourself? I mean, you say, I get all the photographer, but all the art, the film, the filmmaker. How would you define yourself? Uh, and, uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, attending. Well, thank you, Fotopia and uh, Guna and uh, everyone who uh, uh, did this uh, amazing job. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, it's always uh, great being here, Yana. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Venus, <laughs> for moderating. Venus is moderating because I'm a horrible speaker, I'm not an I'm moderating because I'm so happy to be moderating. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I would call myself a visual artist. Um, it's a bit confusing because a lot of people, uh, they know me mainly as a photographer because of the past few years. Uh, I was a little bit of a plus I studied filmmaking and uh, advanced cinematography and directing and I started out as a filmmaker but I was always doing uh, photography and uh, I used to paint, I used to design, uh, I was going to fashion school and it was a lot of... Oh, so, um, and this is one of the things that, that we made this topic about uh, because um, uh, all of these things uh, are what, like the combination of الحاجات this is what uh, uh, like made me reach somewhere where I am right now and <laughs> you know, whatever I do. <laughs> I have a so. question. So in our talks, we always, in general, like whenever we talk you always say the term image making. How is this different from capturing an image? Like, why do you always pick image making? Um, because we create images. How many? Uh, we, we like uh, in general filmmakers or uh, uh, certain photographers, and it depends on the genre of photography. We create. Yani, and I'm saying if I would capture sura, I would when that's when I'm doing street photography, documentary, wildlife, when I'm suffering, I but what we do is basically we all create uh, somehow, yani. uh, and when it comes to uh, fashion photography or alanet or uh, even portraits, uh, the kind of portraits and celebrity and stuff that I do, it's mainly I create, I'm not just capturing. Uh, I capture certain emotions and certain uh, looks, but here mainly I like, uh, it's like a canvas for me, I paint it. With the other thing in filmmaking, when we do uh, preparing our shoots and working, depends on the project, so this is basically, we create images, and uh, okay. whether it's moving or still, yeah. Uh, what would make a good image maker, Yani? Okay, we have a picture, we have a picture, we have a picture, we have a picture, what would make, in your opinion, of course, what would make a good, image maker, like a uh, few uh, factors to feed every the one for for someone to be a good image maker um, and this is a bit uh, like this is my opinion honestly and I've been as very and through my experience of like I would call professionally 12 or 12 years my son um, good image making comes from studying a lot from practicing a lot from uh, uh, keeping an open mind from learning from anything and everything around you and everyone around you uh, and that's, for me, uh, it came uh, through art. Because I started out when I was very young, I used to paint. So when this baby came to me, I was able to see the world in a different way. So that affected my work uh, when I studied for Gama, when I studied uh, filmmaking, uh, film photography, film, whenever, like, in my, in my job in general. Yani. Uh, I see things from that perspective and understanding art and training myself and training my mind and all of that uh, uh, it, it is basically everything that I do comes from there and you could tell me I'm sorry if I'm speaking in Arabic but you, you were telling you were me you supposed to speak in English? <laughs> <laughs> English okay. so you were telling me about does anyone have a problem with English? is it okay? so you were telling me when we were like discussing this uh, that 
when you're doing workshops, some of the people that come with great portfolios and they come and then you're like, and they're supposed to be image makers and they're coming for the workshop and you see certain things. <laughs> so uh, I just want to elaborate on that, like uh, because we were stressing on the idea of image making. Uh, okay, so um, I think we have an oversaturated market in Egypt and probably worldwide. Uh, every time I uh, scroll on social media, and that's not only the case, I am like, I, like I know a lot of photographer friends and filmmakers, like every single time you scroll, you see a new photo, you see a new artwork, you see something, so it's becoming too much and everything looks the same, or almost everything looks the same and it's very repetitive. So, it sometimes gets a bit boring, okay? So I try to, to go back to basics sometimes, and even in my workshops, uh, I don't do, uh, like I start from intermediate to uh, any advanced levels. So I ask for portfolios, and I get actually interesting portfolios of people who want to attend. And for me, like, okay, Khalas, technically they know, like they can take photos and everything, so okay, fine. And I get surprised <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, and it's because, um, a lot of people want to be image makers, or photographers, or filmmakers, and everything, but very few from from, your experience. from my experience. Like, of course, there are, we have great artists, uh, and like uh, some of them are here, and like people that we meet and we see their work and what have So I mean, like maybe people who attend more of the workshops and get a, I get surprised sometimes because fee there's this uh, rush, there's a hurry, uh, and. There is a lack of, of knowledge of certain things, which I think is the basics of everything. For example, if I'm giving a fashion photography workshop and someone comes up and they already are working or they're already uh, fashion photographers, <clears throat> and they know nothing about fashion photography, nothing about iconic photographers. Like if they see a photo of uh, uh, any major iconic photographer whose work is uh, displayed at the Met or the MoMA or the Louvre or any, any museum, we're talking about big work, um, big artists, artists that we learn from. They're schools, yeah, basically. And they know nothing about that. They know no one. I'm not talking one person in a workshop. I'm talking about six, seven people in a workshop, intermediate and professional, like advanced level. For Dakhil Leni, it made me think a lot. And it made me add a very big theoretical part in my workshops because we need to know the history. We need to understand. We need to know art. We need to know. If I'm interested in fashion photography, then I need to know what is fashion photography, who are the fashion photographers that... We had an interesting uh, <coughs> comment. You were talking that people need to also know about the fabrics. It's of not course. just about the technicality if it's, of If it's fashion photography, it's fashion. Fashion. Exactly. Yeah. Tawan, yani, um, I had to study styling and I used to design, I mean, I studied styling. I learned from makeup artists who are on set, um, from everyone around me, because even like, we all teach each other. I mean, if there are certain makeup artists that we always work together and they're like, okay, so what's your lighting today? Okay, I'm harsh, I have uh, gel, whatever. But they understand, and this is very important, in the, just because, for example, you're a makeup artist and you're doing fashion photography, you actually do need to learn a little bit about, not saying go study photography, but you need to learn something about it. So uh, it's very important to, uh, to broaden your perspective. In general, yes. yes. And like to, and I think in that, uh, what helped me so much is actually art. Again, back to that. Yeah, yeah you had this <coughs> saying, the retina, like I can't remember it, a bit, like about. Uh, about. <laughs> yeah, okay. So. Uh, so that the retina is part of the brain, and you yes. always have to, uh, like, the more you like expose it and like to see and train it uh, in the right way, uh, you you develop, and this is something uh, called the visual intelligence. And visual intelligence, um, I think it's it's like Sapere Vedere Hagakat that Leonardo da Vinci, and it's basically he used to apply it to his work and used to apply it uh, like in the, like on most of his work. And something that he used to say all the time uh, is that you always have to be visually intelligent and to always study and always to look more and like not look more. I I study from films, I study from paintings, I study from people around me, I study. And psychology, uh, different, yeah, so because it, it really helps in the business at the end of the day. So back to the business, <laughs> so we're going back to the business part, um, do you get creative in like business, like when you're hired and this part, like 
you get the freedom to be that creative or like tell us more about this creative and business part? Um, okay, so this is, um, uh, you're very lucky if you have a commercial shoot and you get to put some art in it or to get creative in it nowadays. Like a few years ago we had more uh, uh, opportunities and more freedom to, to do like really nice campaigns here. And unfortunately we don't have that much now because uh, people are looking for something fast and let's get it done with. I'm talking about photography. Yes. Um, you're very lucky and this is a trap that a lot of photographers, uh, they fall in. I personally fell in that and it made me stop for a while, it made me take breaks several times. Um, that I'm comfortable and it's basically accepted. Uh, okay, I want to create art, then I'm going to do my own art. If I have a project that is super commercial and I need to, like, uh, I'll do my 110% في how كل حاجة, but I need to accept that this is commercial work. So I'm just doing this for the business. And if I'm lucky to uh, put in some, like, uh, creativity in it, في أي حاجة that I'm involved in the creative process في how, then of course that would be it. much but this is what's going to be in the portfolio basically <laughs> most of the time but other than that uh, so this is what makes you do the art projects so <laughs> yes yeah, so it's like working in parallel like you want to yes. do your art you do your art you want to do your work professionally you do well, it's all you do it professionally but i mean like commercial work because the, yeah, yeah, I see a lot of uh, photographers, uh, including myself, I, I suffered from that and whenever I speak with some photographer friends and I see a lot of uh, upcoming photographers, they're like, in a commercial way, this is too commercial, what's wrong with too commercial? It is commercial because this is, <laughs> this is what gets us the money, you know? <laughs> so this is basically the business, yeah. But uh, you don't want to do it, don't do it. But in, in order to do it, it's actually very tough and it's not easy, خالص, yeah. In order to do it, uh, you need to Bordu understand so much. It, it took a lot of effort and it took a lot of knowledge. Um, and uh, actually, the commercial part. It's a very saturated market, but why do you do it over and over again? Why do you do the biggest campaigns? Why do people hire you? <laughs> yeah, I, I want to know that. So why would people, hi why would people hire you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when in this belly, it's not about getting hired. It's about getting like, and with not all brands or all clients. Because sometimes, like, there are brands and clients that you actually don't want to work with. <laughs> That's the, uh, for me, it's getting rehired. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, like, if I'm shooting for brands like, Masan, let's say, uh, Vodafone, Orange, it's a lot, uh, Coca Cola, all the brands that I've shot multiple times for, uh, they come back for a reason. And uh, or maybe reasons to any photographer. Not I'm not talking about myself, but I mean I uh, know. There's you know, there's there's a lot of effort, and again, this comes from like understanding psychology of the uh, of the agency, reading the room around you, understanding the brief properly, delivering, and to see enough sick completely to separate uh, that this is okay. This is purely commercial work. And uh, this client needs something in specific. So it's all about me. And this is uh, something that we all fall in. Oh, campaigns I've done for the same brands campaigns that are very, very similar. But am I going to reject it every time because, oh my God, I don't like it? Of course not. Fahma Azdifa, this is like you separated. That's what we hire, like what Brendan is baby, and you hire me again. Um, especially not if it's uh, big campaigns, for example, Ramadan campaigns, or Pegas, etc. It's because, um, I guess, you can ask this, yeah. I think it's because you deliver. You deliver right. And, um, and delivering right deep, bit by, you have to actually uh, accept, again, in the city, like you separate the art and what you want to do 100% and do it in your own way, but you need to separate. And uh, you need to be, um, need not to be actually, the artist whose work gets thrown away. Don't be the reshoot artist. Because I get a lot of reshoots and I know several photographers who always get, like right now, because the market is super saturated, we get a lot of reshoots. Why? Yeah, interesting. Oh, so, yeah. so people are hired, the people they don't like the picture and then they come to you for a reshoot. Uh, the, the, like the client doesn't like the pictures and then they come to you for a reshoot. Uh, that's interesting. 
Okay, so why do they do that again? I don't know, but I think because um, with Instagram and like the mix of like, you, you go on Instagram, you see a lot of nice pictures of photographers. But uh, if you want to do, like if you want to get paid for a job, then you need to know that you are capable of doing this job. And it took me a, a very long time to accept getting paid for the first three years of my life. Uh, okay, I deserve to get paid. I think that there is a little bit of a lot of people go and they're like, they could be like really good uh, street photographers or fashion photographers, but they're not up for a big campaign. Like dealing with celebrities and understanding how to deal with agencies and like, uh, yallah, I have to light in five minutes and I have to finish this in like no time. I have a very tough celebrity in front of me. Uh, client uh, <laughs> crazy going to handle all of that and there's the reason why a lot of people don't like commercial photography because it is boring <laughs> and it's too tough sometimes like minimum you you shoot for 18 hours or 16 hours or 24 or sometimes 26 hours and you have to deal with yeah, the, the, the hormones of everyone, if I made the shoot, that's the intense thing. So you have to understand the client in front of you, deal with the model or the celebrity and agencies and uh, the new generation of agencies, which that we need to work on, I guess. And like, uh, do the terms like about delivery, like what you can deliver, you have to be clear with that, like they have to give you certain terms uh, and you know that you can do it. Because I think some people just uh, say, yes, I can do the shoot without knowing what is the shoot about. And whereas, you know, I find some people just saying, yes, I can do the shoot just to take the job. Of course, it exists a lot, but I mean, like, if you're going to do a, a commercial, like, you at least need to be briefed. You need to know what you're going to shoot, yeah. <laughs> that you have to. But so let's see, there's beefs are not in the problem, yeah. beefs with you, yeah. If you don't understand, you don't understand. 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 You don't You I, I believe that everyone deserves a chance, and of course, but I would never put myself in a situation where Haruh al Hasab client, like on a big budget or like even if it's a small budget, and to go try out something that I know that I'm not very capable of, because at the end of the day, this is our reputation. Yani, if uh, if every time I'm uh, I get uh, my work to be reshot, I I stick to what I know. I, I see it that way because at the end of the day, sometimes maybe I'm a bit tough on myself, but because this is the, it's a tough job at the end of the day. And that's the thing, like, you, like, this is why you always need to practice. Uh, this is why you always need to test, work for free, do pro bonos, do... I still do that, and I know a lot of people, I think, Kiki, Gheb, we're all here, we all... Yalla, we have a concept, uh, let's shoot, let's do something. Uh, I, I worked with the biggest names in New York uh, when I was uh, 23, um, and I, I actually had my company opened, and then uh, I went and I trained with a photographer there. And I worked with some of the biggest names, people who work on the Met Gala, people who work with celebrities in Hollywood, like makeup artists and stylists and everything. Um, and these people used to uh, shoot on a weekly basis at least once for their portfolios. We just get uh, fresh faces, models, Ayhaga, and Yola, let's test. I see that this is not happening a lot now. Uh, plus, you have a lot of repetitive. Uh, Faces and repetitive uh, ideas. I get Sometimes we're just busy, actually. But I see from the new generation that people don't want to invest in themselves. I'm not generalizing. I'm just saying that some. And again, I see great talents, and a lot of them they work. Come, we like they I have projects. We work together, uh, and they're actually like the new generation is very very impressive. But I see some laziness, shwaya, in some people. Uh, everyone's in a hurry. Everyone is in a hurry. Everyone wants to be a founder of Mabad, a uh, CEO of. Uh, <laughs> it's just titles, you know. It is. It is, especially with like there's this pressure of social media that everyone wants to 
create something and everyone wants to do something and to reach something. It's not like that. At the end of the day, we're creating art, we're, we're having fun. If I would give myself this advice maybe eight years ago or ten years ago, I would like slow down. This is not worth it. <laughs> Like, no, actually, we all agree on that. <laughs> we always say, we actually could have just slowed down a little bit, maybe, and maybe took it easier because at the end of the day, we're creating images, we're having fun. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, we'll go back to that question where you're saying like repetitive shots, uh, doing this all over again, and like, mashallah, like the many years you've worked in. Uh, did you ever get like uh, blockage, like the writers when they get those blockage? Do you ever like get, and how do you deal with it? How, how is it? Uh, of course, I mean, yeah, Akid, I get a creative block a lot, yeah, I mean. um, in, in repetitive work, it's because again, um, with the, the social media, the amount of shoots happening all around the world, uh, uh, it's, uh, it gets boring and you see the same thing and people sometimes uh, intentionally they copy and sometimes so it's always like that um, even like when, when we do films even like working uh, in the film industry we always have this uh, problem um, it's not the lack of ideas it's, it's, there, there are so many uh, factors that would uh, affect uh, your creative process uh, could be get political here could be the economic uh, there's there's so much going around us I think uh, also some negativity uh, a lot like you have uh, limited uh, uh, resources that you would want so you kind of keep on doing the work that comes if you're not shooting the work that represents you. Uh, so, Akid, by time, you get uh, stuck somewhere or you get, uh, I'm tired, I'm bored, like, I don't want to do this anymore. And it happened to me so, so many times. And it's completely normal because it happens to everyone, by the way. <laughs> um, and um, sometimes, like, and actually commercial work did that to me. When I used to shoot a lot of commercials, uh, I realized like it's not what I this is not me this is not what I'm what I'm doing but because I was oversaturated with work and like yalla uh, shoots back to back I didn't breathe I didn't uh, have time to create the art that I want or the art that represents me. So I thought I can't like I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like I'm like, like I'm starting to hate photography. Like uh, that, okay. What am I doing? I need to go back to filmmaking. I need to. Nana uh, Rekas, this is what I love. This is what I have more passion for. Because I want my friends, they suffer with me a lot. Yeah, how should you? After we have this like you, you feel down. Um, and again, this is when I had to accept. I had to accept, like, okay, you're doing this. For certain reasons, and actually sometimes it's fun. Sometimes the, the work is rewarding. Not always, but you know, when you when you have uh, to create interesting work, basically, um, and when it's not repetitive, because sometimes you get certain brands, and like I'm talking major brands, who ask you to do the same thing. You like the same lighting. You do. So what are you going to do? Are you going to reject every single shoot that comes? Of course not. And I, I, I would feel stupid to do that. No, <laughs> not that one. So what I do basically is sometimes I go back to basics. Um, I know I see my old work. I try to uh, fall in love again. Like, uh, uh, why did Aston I start this? Why am I doing this? What makes me love it? Mumkin a test shoot, hatta uh, it's a very simple idea. If I can travel, definitely in Bali, just wandering around museums or streets, or looking at new faces, a uh, new place, uh, away from the brown cathedral of Cairo, <laughs> so yeah. helpful. Uh, fa, yeah, this is uh, this is kind of just to remind yourself why you started. I know it might sound cliche, but actually it helps a lot. Yeah. To in the end of when I look at, uh, at my old work. It makes me feel much better than my recent work. <laughs> yes, and this, this is one of the reasons that I have a repetitive way. If that is okay, fine. Like I really need to focus on my film work, and uh, this is why I, I like uh, I haven't been doing a lot of photography lately because uh, I'm not quitting Kibiani, but because 
I'm trying to balance. Uh, I went back to painting, that's why like, you didn't know when, when you were at yes, my studio. I, I was amazed. I went to her house for an interview and I'm like, wow, I thought she just like, she's starting painting just to start something new. She's like, no, I've been doing this for her. I'm like, yeah, it shows you and it's really good. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm horrible at promoting my work. I can promote someone's work much better than I do for myself. That's very true. <laughs> but, but really, uh, I, I was really amazed by the stuff and then the, she, she then shot, shot me with the filmmaking and um, what she does other than that, the reading, the museum, the psychology, the... the yeah, I was, uh, I was really impressed with, with everything. And I just want to ask you something like just to end this, uh, just to go to an interesting point that I saw. Um, the rush and everyone is, that's in a rush and people don't take time to uh, learn about the history of photography, about the things that they like. So if they like birds, they will learn about anatomy of birds because you told me you also know about anatomy to shoot portraits and everything. Can we go back to, like, just to talk about that again? Um, again, I used to paint when I was really young and I used to always carry a camera and uh, just shoot. I uh, thought, let's, I mean, I thought I'd green out of the I thought I'd have green out of um, but uh, I studied, style, again, I studied styling, I studied uh, art, I studied cinematography, uh, directing, filmmaking in general. Uh, it's all, and I'm as baby, this is all under the same umbrella. Like, it's, it's the same pot at the end of the day. Like, art, it's, it's, you know, painting teaches you about lighting. And this is, like, when I was starting photography, I was, I'm self-taught. Uh, so, I'm, I'm a very big fan of Rembrandt and Caravaggio and, like, all, all the that type of, of art in general. Uh, and I noticed their lighting techniques and their portraits and the paintings. And I did not know that there's something called Rembrandt Triangle that existed at the time. And then after studying photography, I realized that there's something called Rembrandt Triangle, which comes from Rembrandt's uh, paintings. He always had that triangle. Mm -hmm. Art inspires a lot, like even um, uh, Godfather, for example, if anyone watched uh, The Offer lately, you see how they got inspired from Caravaggio's paintings. The, and a lot, like Ali Mbera was actually saying that uh, uh, how a lot of artwork inspires cinema, inspires anything. And um, one of the, the things that actually we're discussing uh, Mbera uh, is um, uh, he experiments, a lot of experiments, uh, it was related to science as well. Uh, that they did uh, on uh, Vietnam soldiers and like uh, uh, medical fields, uh, librarians, uh, all like people from all around the world, uh, different fields. They did experiments with uh, with them, and uh, they teach them art and how to understand art. And this made them develop so much in their careers. And it's, this is where we go back to the visual intelligence thing. Uh, like, uh, we, like if we're both looking at the same bottle, we're never going to see it the same way. And that's one thing I learned when I was studying in New York that because we were like around ten people, for in, in the class and people who come from different countries and backgrounds and everything, and no one used to shoot the same model the same way. And uh, that's one of the things, Bordeaux, that it, it makes me comfortable because you have your eye, you have your vision, I have my eye, I have my vision, so this whole competition <laughs> and this whole thing, it's just, it's, it's a bit ridiculous, knowledge. like everyone has their own, uh, exactly. Yeah, and all of this knowledge that, uh, that you've learned, going back to the business part, does it help? Sorry, there's something, yeah, we were talking about the anatomy, Malish, I didn't yes. answer. Uh, I had to study newer, nude art photography uh, in order to understand the figure, the, aside from the art. And this is actually the most thing that helped me understand faces and bodies and how to light uh, people in general, um, and to understand the, the figure itself. And it helped me so much in fashion photography as well. So does this help also with the business, like all of this knowledge, it makes you stand out as a business part? Uh, I keep, well, I mean, of course, uh, I like, there are things like uh, people I would never work with if I didn't train myself, if I didn't work on myself, uh, uh, projects that I've never shot maybe, I wouldn't uh, be chosen to, to work with someone like Hamad Yatin, <laughs> for example, yes, yes. If, if I did not uh, do this, uh, uh, I would not say on a daily basis, but if I did not do this uh, on every project that I worked on, uh, on, on a smaller scale, I would have not worked on big projects with a mastermind like him. So this all got me somewhere, and Yanni. 
this gaining the trust of clients, gaining the trust of uh, someone like him, for example, working as a production designer, as a creative with him, is huge for me. So uh, if I didn't <laughs> teach myself, if I didn't work, uh, I would have never, uh, like, uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Do you guys have questions? I see you smiling there. Uh, they're, they're, they're my mean friends, so okay. yeah, they're making fun of me right now. <laughs> so do you guys... Um, later. Lana, we need questions because... Yes, thank you, Taymour. So, Taymour. Uh, you were talking about uh, the repetitive nature of something and how in certain things become repetitive in your day-to-day. -day. Is that from like... Is that my family, like of just creating something that's similar to something you did before? Like, what kind of repetitiveness do you talk about when you describe that? Um, repetitiveness, if, if, it, if I'm talking about my work, it's because a lot of times I get asked to do the same thing with major clients. Yani, uh, I got, a few years back, we shot a very successful Coca-Cola campaign and it was uh, uh, all over the streets. Uh, it, I think that was in 2018. احنا لحد النهارده بيتبعت لي البيف ده بنفس ال يعني بنفس الصور ريفرنس فاهم قصدي؟ الوت يعني يعني الاكزامبل دي كتير قوي اولسو يو هاف انذر بروبلم ذات ذير از سم سورت اوف ليزينس رايت ناو وين كومز تو فوتوغرافي اند اوت دورز ان جنرال لايك بيل بوردز يلا ليتس دو ات اون ا باك دروب افصل بوت سم فيجوالز ان باك جراوند سو يو ار كايند اوف ستك with uh, like a couple of lighting uh, setups because this is what they want, agencies basically, because a lot of people just, just don't want to do an effort. You know? So it gets boring and it gets repetitive. But if you have more than three, four days or six days, <laughs> I'm not going to say no, but if that's what you want. And again, I don't have to like it. I don't have to post it. I mean, a lot of that work, I don't, like, I, sometimes I just like, I don't even want to see it in the street. And it could be for a really great brand. But it's just sometimes, خلاص, انت بتزه. So it's repetitive. And the other repetitive part is because you see a lot of, uh, of work from everyone, which is kind of repetitive as well, because everything kind of looks the same. There are trends. يعني مثلا زي فكرة, uh, uh, now everyone is into analog and film photography, which is great, perfect. But see, there's certain style, certain colors and techniques <laughs> Sometimes it's just, and it's not just, I'm not talking about film, I'm talking about the whole Instagram trends happening right now. Everyone looks the same, fish identity, sort of, fame. And the market is everywhere, yeah. Do you think, like, follow up, the laziness they're describing, do you think, like, the Zetman Asil Asla, do you think it's more laziness or just entitlement of Ines that it's so much easier to become, like, famous and have an audience now? Everyone feels like they should have it. Everyone is in a rush. There's a lot of pressure from social media. There's a lot, lot of pressure from the people around you, and uh, there's a, there's this rush. Oh, you have to work. You have to do. You have to do this and that and whatever. And hurry. Uh, actually, if if I would go back, I wouldn't start my company that young. Of course not. I wouldn't. Honestly, and that's my my personal experience. Because it put a lot of pressure on me and uh, it delayed me for hagat, uh, even and 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 because I I'm I'm a filmmaker before being a photographer and this is my main passion. Like, I love photography and uh, uh, I would, it's not something <laughs> yeah it's not something that I would ever stop doing. But the business baby, it took a lot of time from my art. It took a lot of time from my filmmaking. It took a lot of time from my life and from Ozzy like. Uh, and I wouldn't be, uh, like, I wouldn't do it that fast. I wouldn't rush into, uh, I'm not going to sleep for 12 days in a row. We used to actually do that in the Ramadan season. And right now, we're going to do it. No longer have that uh, energy. Um, and it's, uh, it's just, uh, you get to choose. Yani, if you're going to do repetitive work, choose the repetitive work that you're going to do. Must but you're going to have to. Can you a question there first? Romy, yeah, I'll show you. Thank you for coming. Talking about fashion, I just want to know what's the favorite part of what you do? Abdallah is very interested in the question. What's the least? He's late. What's the most favorite part of what you do? And what's the least favorite part of what you do? That's actually a very interesting question. Romy, I'm not shooting you is my favorite part. Um, I mean, actually, it's more than shooting this. Anyway, uh, 
uh, one of my favorite uh, parts is uh, the reward. And then uh, when you see something uh, and uh, you feel like Ada, that was worth it. Or when I get a lot of uh, celebrities who, uh, until today, uh, years later, they come and tell me the portrait that you took is, is still the best portrait of us. And I hear that from a lot of them. And this makes me happy. And I see them, uh, some of them, they use the same uh, portrait uh, for 10 years and 8 years and 7 years. And that makes me happy. Uh, seeing work uh, uh, that was worth التعب, it makes me happy sometimes. Uh, making different work, uh, it's, it's just a, a lot of a lot of things that would make me happy in this job um, because we have a very interesting job in, in our industry, whether it's film or art, in like uh, photography, because you get to meet a lot of interesting people. You go to places, you meet, uh, especially. But I do different genres, so. Uh, if I'm working with certain people, not in the film industry, you meet interesting people, you learn from them. Uh, fashion, not the creating artistic pictures, not uh, Even when I do travel or wildlife, there's something that you learn from the animals as well. You something you learn from the tribe, something that you learn from everything around you, and it's uh, it's good to to do uh, such work. Yeah, it's it's worth it. The worst part is uh, a lot as well. <laughs> it's agencies sometimes. Because agencies are, are worse. I love them. Friends, they're horrible. Anyway, I don't know if it's a hobby. Actually, it's, um, I think laziness. When people are lazy, uh, when people don't want to work, will, or they're just waiting for you to do the work uh, and not invest in it. Um, and repetitiveness is, is, is a horrible thing, and this is what puts you in the trap of. Uh, I'm, I'm tired of this, I'm bored of this film. Um, now, when there's no appreciation of the work, because it's a very tough job, if, if you're not appreciated properly, then uh, it's not worth the hours standing and working on this film, I guess. I'm sure that's, that's what I can think of right now. Yeah, I have another question here. Uh, it's uh, Hi. Hi. Uh, regarding the lack of grief uh, phenomena that you talked about, <laughs> Uh, Abdullah Zawri, did you briefs? Do you want to do it or not? No, I mean, you want to do it in general. No, Abdullah is going to do it with the camera and I'm going to do it at the same time. Abdullah, you want to do it? I don't think that we I'm talking about briefs as in concepts from agencies. Uh, <laughs> uh, every now and then, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So, <laughs> like, in, in, my, uh, in, in my, the things that I do, Usually each shoot I have a five per client and one thing, and every time I write a thing in, in uh, like my port in in a sheet, like uh, uh, how many edits should I give to the client? Should the client take the PSD files or not? Like each time I have a fight. So should, I'm sorry. Should the client take a the PSD files? PSD files. Uh, never do that. Yeah, yes. I, I Ever. Know, I know, I Don't. Because yes. this is ruining the industry. Do not, <laughs> nobody gets to take raw images. Yes, uh, Full stop. Yes. <laughs> and for this, like I have a recommendation. Uh, since we have like a platform like Photopia and we have some some people like you, you are in the market for a very long time. Why don't we like have uh, an initiative, maybe uh, yeah. a set of guidelines or uh, yeah, like we will teach the clients how to do briefing for the photographers and the creatives, so we make our job easier. I don't think in our market that's gonna work that much, and I really hope and this happens. But uh, I think a couple of years ago, like three years ago, production houses in general, Alanet, they did this very big meeting and they tried to put rules. Meshu uh, biha shwaya, but taban finest firay they did not. And the thing is, again, with the oversaturation of people in the market right now, uh, you have a lot of people who just want to jump on projects. So I get surprised when people tell me, "Give me raw images." Like, have you ever heard that I give raw images? Why would you even ask me if you? I don't want the job if that's going to make you because you do not. You get my work with the final outcome. You do not own the images. You do not own the, uh, the, the raw images in general, like the whole shoot. So uh, with the new, uh, uh, like a lot of us from Yanni Munzamin, like we don't do that. And sometimes we uh, talk about by pressure for hagayt mu'ayana with certain people that kind of cannot say no to. But I, I never give celebrity uh, uh, raw images. I never to, to agencies or anyone in general. Uh, we write a contract that is for backup. Because uh, these are some of the things that are ruining uh, the industry. Because uh, let's say if I'm shooting um, for example, 
where it did own raw images with any of the celebrity. And this happened before, and it's one of the reasons that I did not, uh, like I stopped doing that. Uh, for you look, I'm going to use it for social media. And then you see an unretouched image of a celebrity. This is in my face at the end of the day, it's my reputation. And then, it's going to backfire. It's not my fault. They decided to use that image. So don't. Don't ever do that. ممكن لو شوت حاجة كوميرشال مش مش حاجة كبيرة قوي في ناس مش محتاجة البي تاتشنج اللي هو هتفرق قوي if it's if it's something needed it's fine يعني I guess this ما تعودهمش على ده خالص ever yeah so we have a question in the back do you need the mic لا I don't need the mic two things بالأول I wish you had your images at the back Yeah. We had the images at the back and she decided it's cliche and we're not going to do it. But we can show them in a minute. Can I do that, please? They're beautiful images, okay? It was very tough to do it. First of all, I was telling Venus that I am a new of photography. It's just, I didn't know what to put. It's fine, Vina, it's okay. Yeah. You can't know. So I'll, I'll, I'll just show you the pictures. Sorry, they're not like, as uh, but i would love to show you because they're amazing she has way more okay um and it was very hard for her to pick that's yeah you will just show the images quickly that was quickly. Not because, yeah. but, and then i can ask you the question all right give us Gamaya, uh, you can always check her Instagram and the rest of her work too, but, uh, because she really doesn't like the pictures. We're forcing her; she kill me outside. But I love her and she loves me, so it's okay. I think this is in line with where you were saying you don't have to promote your own work. This is another. No, it's not. It's it's not even hard. It's not easy to take what you want to show and then. And you're not presenting them, you're just kind of there. So. Okay, but Ula, I'll, I'll ask you the question meanwhile. You, you were saying that sometimes it gets repetitive and you repeat it a lot of times. And you get bored sometimes and you repeat it a lot of times. Bene Hamil Ali said that uh, once he saw a, 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 an ugly ad or an ad that disturbed him, he actually went to the client and proposed something. He's a movie director. You as a photographer, when you get a brief from a client, and you're not happy and you feel it's repetitive and you feel it's boring and you feel, okay, I'm gonna do it because I have to work. What? Does it occur to you sometimes to propose a new concept, a new idea? Akid, oh, Akid, of course, and I've done this a million times. I've changed, uh, actually, for certain brands, I've changed their products, <laughs> not only their ads. Um, I used to do that, sorry? This is your role as an artist. So yes, 100%, 100%. Um, and again, this is where I need to separate. Lawana, because the thing is, what I do is kind of different because I have my own agency and uh, we do uh, uh, certain projects from scratch, from the creative process till the production, and I only produce my own work. So this is mainly when I have more freedom. Or we have agencies like Mathan, FE7, JWT, whoever, uh, they have a, a, a brief, خلاص, a lot of, we can discuss the brief sometimes, and sometimes this is it. خلاص, ف, uh, There are times where you have the opportunity to uh, get involved, and there are times when you don't. And sometimes we work together. Yani, uh, some of my favorite ads, uh, and the ones that I still love, are usually the ones that I'm involved in. Like, uh, there was with Leo Burnett uh, before the Johanna Dodra black and white one. Deep uh, Baby, this is something that's still memorable. Uh, Coca-Cola, I was pretty much involved in it, and it was a huge success. Um, when I get involved, yes, and sometimes when there's something that I, like, I, I see that is wrong, of course, in all shoots, I say that this is wrong, and I say it out loud in front of the agency, in front of the client, because um, you have um, uh, uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, young uh, uh, generation right now who are not very well taught from the uh, older generation in agencies. So you're in a big campaign and uh, a big client and you're stuck with someone who's telling you something just to prove themselves. And I'm like, no, <laughs> get me your ECD and your ECD is going to stand right next to me because I'm not going to do that because at the end of the day, if something is going to get messed up, it's going to be in my face. 
So I say no, if I have to say salah, uh, picking different angles, of course I do that, 100%. But I'm talking about the creative brief. If it's coming from a certain agency and this is their brief, sometimes there's nothing that you can do about it. And yani, I've just shot a recent campaign, uh, a very big campaign for the same brand that I shot four or five years ago with exactly the same visuals. I mean, as an agency, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? It's exactly the same. I shot it. And I'm like, in front of them, I'm like, guys, are you serious? And I'm like, we've shot this. And they're like, okay, so how can we shoot it? I'm like, we shot this. <laughs> so let's just shoot it the way we shot it. But we shot it actually in a different way. Ashen Zuru for Shomena was different. So, so yeah. Uh, that's for you, Betty, when you're uh, asking anyone to shoot the paints, please consider... I send a brief. Please, a different brief. Or let me take time, a brief for you. <laughs> that would be much better. Uh, I'll go with the slideshow quickly. Sorry, there's another question, sir. No, I say no a lot. A, a lot. Yani, fi clients kind of tabaari from the awal, and fi shogalanet bit tabaari from the awal. If you celebrities that are from the awal, I'm like, no, my mental health is much more important than that, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> and my back, my disc, I have a big deal away from the show. Saying no, um, if, if it's wrong, if, if it's completely wrong, and there's nothing that you can do about it. But a lot of times when I said no, uh, I won. Uh, I won when I rejected certain shoots and I didn't do it. And I won when I rejected certain shoots and they got convinced to do what I want. So, sometimes no is not a bad thing at all, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. You're doing something for the right reason, not just because you want to do it. Of course not, you're here. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. No, no. There are no people like that. I'm going with the slideshow from behind your back. <laughs> What was your, if you have like one favorite project that you both have? I don't know, I don't know. Favorite project? I don't know. Uh, film, I think it would be my personal project, mainly uh, things that I directed. Uh, I have uh, a couple of personal projects that are not published yet, that will be very soon, and I think this is by far one of my favorite, uh, some people saw it here. Uh, this is uh, probably uh, one of my favorites, and um, I would say Coca-Cola, I'm very proud of. There um, very simple shoots of portraits that I still really like, and I always enjoy working. Uh, with Tora and Reda Aydin, for example. We always get the best pictures. Even if it's as very simple as like, no lighting, no styling, no anything, we always end up shooting something that uh, we all like. For example, these could be some of my favorites. Uh, my nude art, actually, which unfortunately I cannot really put here. I did, I did. <laughs> and I, I cannot did. do a lot. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. It's fine. Um, I, I prefer my fine art, honestly. Yeah, that is mainly my fine art and certain projects, fashion photography, top on the old fashion work that we used to do, uh, some recent jewelry, uh, like the past two three years maybe. I get it. Yes. I'm. Um, I'm sorry, I should feel lecture back to back. I'm not close to this. Sorry. I have a struggle, and I don't know if it is the same. That you do many things like painting, photography, geography, and many. Tell me. Filmmaking, yes, sorry. So, uh, I'm sorry. So, do you have this struggle that sometimes you have some pressure to, to choose one uh, thing to focus on? I mean, like, sometimes the market or the, the friends or uh, your, yourself, you think that I need to focus on just one thing because sometimes some photographers, they... So, I have a link at the... Okay, maybe I focus on only for on photography, and then no, you need to, to focus on fashion, not only for like you choose photography, only, then you focus on something uh, specific in photography. Industry? So yeah, so what do you think? Uh, it, it's a very tricky question, but interesting because. Um, I did not uh, choose to do all the things at the same time, for uh, out of nowhere. 
uh, I had to try out a lot of things and I failed for Hagat and I succeeded for Hagat and I fell in love for Hagat and other things that I did not like. Uh, so this is when you choose what to do. And it depends. Yani, um, at the end of the day, we were just discussing this. It's under the same umbrella. Yani, but Anasan, I don't do interiors. I don't do food. But I do fashion, I do portraits, I do fine art, which is all related. Maybe about Hega is probably wild, uh, wildlife photography uh, or equestrian when I do it sometimes. But the about Hega I do it, but the other thing kind of falls in the same pot. Um, and again, all of these things, uh, uh, I believe in, uh, in um, like what I do now for Masan production design with uh, someone like Muhammad Yatim uh, is because I had to learn all of that and I had to do all of that. and. It, there were years where I focused on uh, things, but it's, it's important to find the balance. Uh, what do you like, and to eliminate things that are not worth it? Okay, am I going to do it as a hobby? Am I going to do it for fun, or am I going to do it because I want to like make money out of this? But when it's belly, like for I tried food, I tried interior. It's not my thing. I'm Aussie, I mean, خالص. So, مش أي حاجة برضو, and that's the thing. And it's عندك هو فطور في زلها يلا نعمل كل حاجة. لا مش يلا نعمل كل حاجة خالص because أكيد أكيد مثلا شريف ويحيى uh, would be a million more times better than I would do uh, حاجات دي يعني I know I would light it I know how to do it but it's not my thing at the end of the day they know much more فاهم قصدي and that's the same with uh, حاجات كتيرة أوي أنت you, got, you get uh, again if you want to do fashion photography learn about fashion photography if it's something that is interesting to you and something that you can understand and know how to do well Focus try on it, excel on it, and do whatever you want on the side there. So it's just, a, I think it's, it's balance. And you need to try everything and eliminate what you don't like. But our, I, I think in a, a lot of successful people, you have uh, uh, Karl Lagerfeld, you have uh, like a lot of people. <laughs> uh, Tom Ford, they do a million things. A lot of other people, they do a lot of different jobs and they're all successful. So let's stick to one thing If you have the time, you have the energy, just do it. So yeah. We'll have to uh, wrap and, and relate. I'm so very sorry. If you want to ask the tool, she's all yours. Best after the lectures and the break, because we have an interesting lecture after, but you have a break five minutes. But we want to thank you, the tool. And Thank you, everyone. We have a three minutes break and then we have a lecture after because we were late for five minutes.